Hey, good morning, everyone. Nice to see you. Well, I would say nice to see you, but I can't actually see you, but good morning. Uh, my name is Ann Bowker. I'm the Associate Dean of Student Affairs and Enrollment in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences School at Carleton. Um, joining me today is Susan Burho, who is my um, colleague, um, uh, joining us the Program Coordinator for the Center for Initiatives in Education. So the plan for this session is as follows. I'm gonna speak for about 15 to 20 minutes to give you a general overview of FAS and some of the exciting things that are going on in our faculty. And then Susan from CIE will talk about the Enriched Support Program, which is a supported pathway for some students entering Carleton. You can ask questions throughout the talk. Um, we ask that you use the Q&A function and there are people in the background who will be answering those questions and hopefully we'll have a bit of time at the end if you have any additional questions. Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge um, both Jesse McClintock, who is our Recruitment, Outreach and Planning Officer, uh, as well as Allison Buchanan-Watson, who is our Student Success Officer, who are both in the background answering questions throughout this session. I'll also note before I start, um, just to kind of put my money where my mouth is, um, I'm a proud parent of two FAST alumni. Uh, my daughter was a journalism student here. She took an African Studies course that really changed her world and then went on to complete an MA in African Studies, is now doing a PhD in Anthropology. And my son uh, was in the Humanities Program. So uh, I have experience um, as a parent, as well as a faculty member and associate dean uh, with, with this faculty. So, as you may have already discovered, we have an exceptionally diverse selection of Bachelor of Arts programs in France, as well as more specialized degree programs. So the Bachelor of Cognitive Science, Bachelor of Humanities, and the Bachelor of Music. We also offer a Bachelor of Global and International Studies, which is shared across FAS and the Faculty of Public Affairs. Now our vast selection of programs and courses allows you to tailor your degree to suit your interests. Especially in your first year, you have the freedom to take a majority of courses in areas of study outside of your major. Needless to say, this is a great opportunity to find out what you like. And if you're unsure about what major to choose, you can start in first year without declaring a major. Take a variety of courses that sound interesting and then choose a major at the end of your first year. Allison Buchanan Watson, as I mentioned, our success officer will be in the BA booth after this talk if you have additional questions about the undeclared option. So why a BA? I'd like to start by just talking a bit about some of the core principles of the BA and why studying the arts is so important and meaningful. The university is a meeting point between tradition and innovation. Excellent universities meet the challenge of maintaining both the commitment to knowledge, learning, and the pursuit of truth, and an acute awareness of the contemporary environments, local, national, and global, in which they do their work. The BA is at the heart of Carleton University's continuing efforts to meet this challenge and BA programs will continue to contribute meaningful, useful scholarship doing, during these uncertain times. Particularly in these times, we need BA graduates, young adults who have developed a number of critical and valuable skills that will really make a difference to how our society develops going forward. The skills that you learn in BA programs are closely linked to what we call employability skills. And employability skills include fundamental skills such as communication. So being able to read and understand information in a variety of forms, such as words and graphs, writing and speaking so others pay attention, listening and asking questions to show your understanding of different points of view. Those fundamental skills also include managing information, locating and organizing information using different technologies, applying knowledge from different disciplines to a common problem, using numbers, figuring out what needs to be calculated, learning how to observe and record data. They also include thinking and problem solving, assessing situations, identifying problems, seeing different points of view, making and evaluating solutions, implementing those solutions. Personal management skills, such as demonstrating positive attitudes, being confident, taking care of your health, taking responsibility for your actions, setting goals, balancing work-life demands, being socially responsible. Being adaptable, being able to work independently as well as being part of a team, multitasking, being open to feedback. And finally, teamwork skills. So understanding group dynamics, being flexible, recognizing diversity, providing and receiving feedback and support when appropriate, understanding conflict, resolving conflict. 
Now, being a BA student at Carleton offers some pretty unique features that you might not find in other universities. Bass is home to about 7,000 students and 300 faculty members, as well as alumni all over the world. And this allows our students to be truly active citizens in the global community. Without, with that being said, despite the size of the faculty, one of the main things we hear from our current students is how much they value the connections they're able to make with faculty and students, how their teachers take the time to learn their names and talk about their interests and the positive experiences that they have with staff in their departments. Another unique aspect of FAST is our first year seminar program, which offers a small class, 30 students max, for first year students that lasts all year, so fall and winter semesters. And each first year seminar focuses on a different topic. Now these aren't your ordinary topics. They're uniquely innovative and exciting, like writing graphic novels and comics, learning about the psychology of success, understanding criminal minds, understanding and developing creativity, environmental sustainability, or even political activism, to name just a few. In addition, students learn about the university, how to access student services, time management, writing and study skills, oral presentations, much of this done in small groups without a significant lecture component. I've taught several of these courses, the most recently with Matt Sorley, who's an instructor in psychology, who taught the psychology of success. And part of that course involved getting people in the community to come and talk about their experiences. So successful people in the community. We had Kelly Lee Evans, who's an Ottawa-based singer-songwriter, come and talk about her road to success. Erica Gilmore, founder and CEO of Hummingbird Chocolates. Both Erica and Kelly Lee are alumni of Carleton. Uh, and we had Sean Menard and Monty McKenney, local Ottawa City Councilors, Sean's also an alum, come and talk about their pathways to success as well. First year seminars are a lot of fun to teach, students really enjoy them, and it's nice to have a class where everybody knows your name within a few weeks. Our commitment to encouraging and supporting this small class experience is unwavering, and plans are already underway to ensure uh, a good number of first year seminars are offered this fall. Uh, and they will continue to provide a chance to develop relationships with classmates and professors. BA students also have many opportunities to conduct independent research and be paid to conduct that research through programs like our summer internship program. For this program, students can develop a research project that they'd like to work on, find a supervisor, and then get some funding to pursue their research. This past year, 10 FAST students received $7,500 to work on independent research projects from May to August, and the topics included identity and first generation black youth, gender inequality, as well as ecological restoration. There are also opportunities to study abroad. Uh, the Institute of African Studies routinely offers a course in a different part of Africa. Haven't been able to do that for the last few years, but um, we expect that to pick up um, in the coming years. Uh, my daughter went to Rwanda as part of um, her studies in, in the Institute of African Studies. Uh, we also have alternative spring break. My son went to South America, helped build a school, um, giving students the opportunity to develop practical skills and apply what they've learned in the class. So through things like um, alternate spring break, internships, practica, uh, offered both within the local Ottawa community and beyond. Now, speaking of outside the classroom opportunities, FAS stands at the center of cultural life on campus housing and supporting a wide variety of music programs, creating writing, creative writing initiatives, drama studies, and is also home to the Carleton Art Gallery, QAG, and the Carleton Dominion Chalmers Center. Now the Art Gallery on campus, QAG, collaborates with the university on programming that enriches teaching and learning opportunities for FAST students, including hands-on experiences, exhibitions, and other events. Open to the Carleton community and the public, QAG's collection focuses on three main areas, 20th century Canadian art, European art, and Inuit and First Nations art, and is one of the largest collections in Canada. You actually have the opportunity to tour QAG next weekend. If you'd like, FAST will be hosting an in-person open house on the 19th, where you can see QAG and its current exhibits in person, as well as learn some more about our programs and speak with some current FAST students. The Carleton Dominion Chalmers Center is the university's arts performance and learning center and the university's first downtown Ottawa building and it also happens to be managed by FAS. 
So the CDC serves a variety of user groups in the community and is the backdrop for large fast special events and even some classes. So a drama studies workshop, for instance. CDC, CDCC also offers unique practicum and work study opportunities for students. Our faculty's recently established Healthy Cities event series was uh, initially held at CDCC. We've been offering it virtually for the last couple of years, but we will go back to, um, to the Carleton Dominion Chalmers Centre. And the Healthy Cities um, event series welcomes subject matter, matter experts from Carleton and the broader community for panel discussions on a selection of topics centered on building and sustaining a healthy city in the 21st century. And that will be continuing on uh, in the, the, again, in the, in the fall term, fall 2022. I'd like to talk a bit about the benefits of our city and what we call the capital advantage. Not only is Ottawa a beautiful, safe and livable city, but it offers Carleton students access to unique learning opportunities they won't get elsewhere. Ottawa boasts an unparalleled network of federal government institutions, legal institutions like the Supreme Court, international embassies, NGOs, the National Gallery of Canada, other national museums, Library and Archives Canada, the National Arts Centre, as well as hundreds of other cultural events and major festivals. All FAST students uh, get free admission to the Writers' Festival that happens, um, that, has, that hosts events several times during the, the academic year. The strong connections Carleton has with these institutions links BA students to their rich wealth of resources and leads to visits and guest lectures from sought after expert speakers, not to mention research collaborations and work placement opportunities. Now this next slide is aimed at those of you who are still undecided on what area you'd like to study, or if you are like the many students who have applied to a specific major, still aren't 100% sure if that field is truly your area of passion. We know that students can face a lot of apprehension about this choice, and we also recognize that university is about much more than just selecting a single topic to study. So as we talked about earlier, FAST um, is quite diverse, 27 different majors, 19 minors, is in fact the most diverse and flexible faculty at Carleton. This means that FAST students are encouraged to chart their own academic paths, to ask big questions, to expand their knowledge, to listen and learn from different voices, and advocate for positive change. Regardless of what you decide to major in, we've tried to create a framework that might help students better see how their degrees can be used to study pressing issues and contemporary topics. These include mental health and the mind, identities and social justice, sustainable futures, and the power of creative expressions. Through these fast frames, students can directly connect what they learn in the classroom to the challenges faced in the real world, earning interdisciplinary education that will prepare them for their future. As interest in mental health and the concept of wellness continues to grow, FAST provides students with a variety of lenses through which to better understand mental health and the mind. So students can gain in-depth interdisciplinary knowledge of how the mind works via courses in the Cognitive Science Department. They can examine the nature of the mind and its relationship with the body by taking philosophy courses. They can track down stories, records, and first-hand perspectives on mental health throughout time with help from the history department. They can understand the mechanisms that underlie our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors through a degree in psychology. And they can unravel the mystery of how the human mind handles language by studying in the School of Linguistics and Language Studies. FAS offers multiple avenues to critically analyze intersections and forms of inequality and to study how people in social movements come together to achieve positive change can learn about historical and contemporary human rights issues through courses in the Human Rights and Social Justice Department, or take a stream in social justice that's offered through the Sociology and Anthropology Program. You can take a historical look at transnational migration and the present day impacts of settler colonialism through history or indigenous, or indigenous and Canadian studies courses. Students can explore how identity is tied to place through courses in cultural geography, linguistics and language. They can discover how identities intersect and converge by taking a minor in critical race studies, sexuality studies, or disability studies. And they can step out of the classroom and into the world through practica, field placements, internships and capstone projects with a minor in community engagement. With respect to sustainable futures, there are many ways to tackle the pressing challenges of addressing climate change. 
and building sustainable futures by studying in France. Students can take a holistic approach to climate change and justice in our interdisciplinary minor in environmental and climate humanities. They can explore the root causes and consequences of environmental problems by taking courses in geography, environmental studies, and geomatics. And they can learn about Indigenous ecological ways of knowing through the School for Indigenous and Canadian Studies. Finally, they can understand the role of culture in conversations around climate change with a minor in heritage conservation. FAS offers students a myriad of ways to discover the power of creative expression by studying the works of great artists throughout history and exploring their own creative practices. FAS is home to the Carleton School of Art and Culture with programs in art history, music, and the history and theory of architecture. Through coursework and practical, you'll have access to Ottawa's great art and cultural institutions, including, as I mentioned before, the Carleton Dominion Chalmers Centre, FAS's newly acquired Arts Performance and Learning Centre, and then there are also English minors in creative writing and drama studies. I wanna just close by um, talking about um, our amazing student groups and organizations. You may have already heard about how supportive and collaborative the Carleton community is. This community spirit extends to our many student groups and organizations too. Just about every program in the BA has an affiliated student association and it's a great way to meet fellow students, seek advice and peer mentorship, forge lasting friendships and cultivate your leadership skills. So I hope this brief talk has given you a sense of what the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences has to offer. Uh, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen, hopefully, um, uh, and turn it over to my colleague, Susan Burho. So thank you very much for your attention. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Susan Burho, uh, and I'm here to talk about the Enriched Support Program at Carleton. I'm just going to load up my screen here. Um, let's see, here we are. So the Enriched Support Program at Carleton, this is a pathway for students who um, might have a record that doesn't represent their academic potential. So this has been a strange time for a lot of people with the pandemic, with a lot of remote learning. Um, some people have found that this has affected their, their grade 12 record or their college record, and they may require an alternative pathway to university study. Or students might be feeling that because of the disrupted high school experience that they've had or college experience that they've had, that they don't feel quite as prepared as they would like coming into university. So what the Enriched Support Program offers is a supported pathway into first year studies. It's a full-time program. Students take first year courses, but they receive transition support with those courses. And it's the kind of transition support that would be valuable to a lot of students as they enter university and feel uncertain about what the expectations are there. So successful um, completion of our Enriched Support Program can earn admission to, to degrees in arts and social sciences and business engineering, computer science and science programs. Um, and we're part of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at Carleton. So what the program looks like, the program, when you come in, um, students would take three first year credits. Now, if you were coming into a degree program in first year, typically you could take up to five first year credits. So you're in a bit of a reduced course load, but that gives you time to kind of adjust to what university level expectations are. And students in our program are registered in five things. They're just spending their time a little bit differently. So the stuff in red on this slide is the stuff that appears in your schedule. Um, and then the others are supports that students in the program receive. So one of the courses that students take is a first year seminar. Um, and Ann Bowker already discussed those a little bit. They're one small class that you'll have in your first year where you really get a chance to get to know your professor. The subjects are a little bit different and interesting. Um, those are some of the sample titles of ones that we've had over the years. And they offer really the opportunity to get to know what university level research and writing looks like 
the instructor for them is going to be really explicit in teaching you the expectations for university level research writing, reading. Um, and that will be woven into the course content through, throughout, the, um, throughout the year. In addition to a first year seminar, you take a couple of, we call them elective courses, but in fact, they may end up being the courses that are your major down the line. So they can be the same introductory courses that other students are taking, you know, if you're interested in going into child studies, or if you're interested in going into history, you can come through our program and take that first year course as part of your studies. Um, you'll be in that sort of large lecture hall course, the thing that you might picture university being like. And the only difference being a student in the Enriched Support Program is that those elective courses will be supported by workshops. And those workshops are essentially organized study sessions that are built right into your schedule. The goal of them is to teach you kind of the academic skills required to succeed in that course. The person who leads that workshop, they're an upper year student in that field. They've taken that course before, often with the same professor, and they're going to attend it all over again and then design study sessions each week that help you to identify what is the key content in that course. You know, you listened to a lecture for three hours. You had all these pages of reading. How do you figure out what you need to know out of all of that? The workshops are really there to help guide you through that first year and give you insight into what it is professors are looking for and how to succeed in that discipline. Um, one, of the, one of the things about university that is a real adjustment is the fact that a full-time student will be in classes for 15 hours a week. Now, 15 hours a week sounds more like a part-time job than a full-time gig, right? But the expectation at university is that you're doing more learning outside the classroom independently than you are in the classroom. So the professor for, for every hour that you're spending in class is, is assigning you a bunch of readings or assignments outside of class um, to get you acquainted with the material. So those workshops, one of the goals of them is to help you structure that study time in a more effective way. Um, the person who trains our workshop facilitators is looking at what the research tells us about what effective study strategies are and you're going to be doing activities in those workshops that get you using those, acti th those strategies. But it's not like, here's some good strategies, go out and try them. It's instead, this is what the research tells us about good strategies. Let's try this right now with the content that we need to learn this week from the class. So you get a chance to put that strategy into action right away. Um, in addition to workshops, you get advisors. So you'd meet with people like myself to talk about what program you want to go into. Or if you're not sure what program you want to go into, how do you figure that out? And what resources or options are out there? What programs have co-ops and practicums? Um, what kind of opportunities exist? Uh, in addition to that, we've got academic coaching. So academic coaches are one-on-one -on -one support where you can go in and say, huh, I've got this assignment for my first year law course. I don't know how to approach a case study. What does that even look like? And they can walk you through from that early stages of an assignment right through to looking at your final draft. Um, or, you know, they can help you with course content. They can help you make a study plan. They can help you tackle procrastination if, if that's what you're kind of trying to work on. Uh, they're really there to help you learn how to learn effectively. So, if you complete the Enriched Support Program and earn the required average, you're, you're guaranteed admission to a degree at the end of it. Uh, for most programs in the arts and social sciences, that's a C plus, and it varies according to the program that you're interested in going into. What we find is that students who make use of the supports that we offer, 80 to 90% of them are successful in earning admission to a degree. So it's a successful um, program. When students apply to our program, we're not just basing our decision on your grades alone. So we're asking you to submit a personal statement that shares a bit about your circumstances. We're asking you to submit letters of reference from teachers who can speak to your potential to succeed at university. Uh, the deadline is June 15th. And the admissions requirements, if you're applying from high school, you need to be in a position to graduate. Not all of your grade 12 courses have to be at that U or M level. Um, 
mature college, university, and international applicants, we, we look at them on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, the costs and funding are just posted there, and I'll just mention that it is an OSAP-eligible program. So if you're looking at funding and that kind of thing, um, it is a program that you can apply for funding for. So that's the program. I'll stop sharing there. And I'll just open it up to questions from people. Uh, anyone has questions about the Bachelor of Arts, if anybody has questions about pathways. And one thing I'll just mention too is that even if this pathway is not something that you may require, you might have friends or family who could maybe use that advice about what opportunities exist to qualify uh, for a degree and what pathways are out there. So lots of time for questions if uh, you have anything that hasn't been answered in the chat. Maybe I'll just um, jump in with uh, sometimes students are, are curious about what kinds of courses they might take in first year. So I have a couple of sort of sample kind of uh, programs that you might um, that you might consider. So if you are a psych student, um, okay, I'm biased, I'm a psych prof, but there are a lot of psych students out there. Um, your only requirement in first year is to take intro psych. Um, the first half in the fall and the second half in the winter, then we would certainly recommend taking a first year seminar of some type. And it doesn't have to be a psychology first year seminar. It can be something from uh, any of um, the, the offerings that are, that are out there. Um, students are often interested in related disciplines. So you might take um, intro to sociology or intro to anthropology, which are related um, disciplines. Um, you have to take some science electives if you're a psych student. Um, so natural history is one of the ones that people really like to take. Uh, Michael Runtz is, uh, is an amazing biology prof who brings live things to class sometimes um, and uh, gives you a, a more accessible way perhaps to access some of the science that, that you'll need. Uh, we have an intro to sign language course in uh, um, the language and linguistic studies area and students are really um, interested often in taking that as an extra tool that you can have going forward. Um, and then you might take uh, Mysteries of the Mind, which is a large um, cognitive science course um, that uh, Jim Davies teaches uh, in cognitive science that students uh, are interested in as well. So as you can see in that sort of profile, there aren't many psych courses that you're taking first year, um, but a whole wide range of, of other courses that, that might be of interest to you. And I think one of the, I'll just add, one of the cool things sure. about the Bachelor of Arts program is that you're doing about half of the credits in whatever you choose as your major, but then the other half, you really get to explore. You know, you can you can add a minor in there and, and have sort of a secondary area of concentration. You can add really interesting things, like Carleton has the opportunity to earn a certificate in teaching English as a second language at the same time that you're earning your degree. So there are all kinds of really neat degree options and add-ons that, uh, that open up to you as you come into a program like this. And what we often see is students start in a particular major, yeah. um, but then they take a course like my daughter did in African studies, which is not something they'd ever heard of before. And, you know, really um, just changes your kind of path. And as you'll see, if you come to our um, live sessions uh, next Saturday at the art gallery, we'll have some, some fast students. There's some fast students floating around uh, today as well, but there are a lot of uh, students who have a major and a minor or a double major. Um, and it gives them, you know, additional set of lenses to kind of uh, ask the kind of questions that they're interested in. Hi, and um, there's there's a lot of questions in the chat about uh, just explaining the pathways again and what they are essentially. Uh, so pathways as in the Enrich the Program pathways or the pathways as in the frames that I talked about? I think it was, yeah, that maybe the frames. Um, so, so those four um, areas that, that we mentioned uh, in terms of uh, mental health in the mind, um, sustainability, those kind of things. Um, if you go to our website, um, we have more specific information there about what specific courses you might take. So um, as we mentioned, geography and environmental studies is one area to go if you're interested in sustainability. Um, but on that web page, there would also be a number of other areas of courses that you might be interested in taking. Um, if you're interested in, um, you know, the mental health and, and uh, issues related to the mind, 
Um, psychology is one place to start, but there's al also childhood and youth studies. There's also cognitive science. Uh, and so um, rather than go through all the courses that are available out there, I would encourage you to go to um, the web pages. We, we have those out there. And again, next Saturday, we'll be talking about that uh, in a little bit of a little bit more um, detail. So uh, I think the point is that there isn't just one path, right? So if you're interested in social justice, there's a number of different ways that you can get there uh, in terms of areas of interest. Um, and uh, we're trying to give you sort of a broad um, sense of, well, you could actually register in human rights. There's actually a program called Human Rights and Social Justice at Carleton, uh, but you could do a sociology degree and there's a stream um, in social justice as well. So. Uh, lots of options, which perhaps sometimes seems a bit overwhelming, but um, you certainly don't have every, have to have everything figured out before you come here either. First year is really the time to sort of explore. Uh, Susan was mentioning that as well, that um, there are a few requirements and, uh, you know, take a bunch of courses that you think might sound interesting and, and that might change um, the direction of the path that, that you originally thought you were going to take. Uh, just there was another question. Um, someone was asking about um, where they might be able to go to get information about electives they could take based on the program they're in. So I think um, certainly the, the undergrad ad advisor in each department and that information is, is on um, each department's website would be a good place to start. Um, they would be familiar with the kinds of courses that students typically take. Um, and again, a part of this is, is your choice, although again, it might seem a bit daunting, but um, I would say um, check out the, the information we have on the website in terms of the, the frames or pathways. And if there's an area that sounds interesting, just follow up with, okay, who can I, um, there'll be links there as well in terms of, you know, I'm kind of interested in climate change and sustainability. Okay, so then you want to talk to uh, the advisor in the environmental studies program who can help you with what related um, uh, elective courses make sense, I think. Anything else coming up? Um, no. No, nothing specifically, no. Well, and it's a lot of um, info to take in. I noticed somebody a, a few slides ago was asking about English courses. Each department in uh, FAS has a booth that will be, um, or has a has a talk actually, as well as a booth, I guess. Um, but the talks are running through the morning. So if you look on the um, schedule, the English department is giving a talk, and that would be a good place to go to uh, to ask about um, specific courses. But then they will have a, a a booth, virtual booth that you can drop in on right after that if you have um, additional questions. And I see criminology is a, a program in the Faculty of Public Affairs, um, which is interdisciplinary. Um, in FAS, we have, in the psychology department, we have a forensic group of professors who are interested in forensic psychology. Um, and the main difference, perhaps, criminology versus forensic psych is that we're psychologists, so we're really interested in the person and understanding, you know, we have somebody who studies psychopaths, we have somebody who studies um, sexual offenders, female offenders. Um, so psychology is more interested in the individual and trying to understand their behavior. Criminology is perhaps somewhat more interested in the societal impact of trying to explain why somebody becomes a criminal, that kind of thing. So you could take courses in both of those areas, um, but criminology itself as a program lives in the, the faculty of public affairs. I guess we're almost finished. I, is it okay if I answer this one in the chat since I see it here? If you're a SageUp student, um, you can definitely get credit for some of your courses that you took at SageUp. So that would be something that you could um, talk to admissions about. Um, there's a certain number that, that you're allowed to transfer from previous programs. And um, uh, first year Sage, uh, if you have even just first year SageUp, some of those, some, some of those credits can transfer for sure. I just want to add that I'll be um, in a booth after this for about an hour. 
So if anybody does have questions for me, please come see me in the booth. Yeah, um, I think just about all the, the programs that I talked about um, will have booths here as well as talks. Um, the philosophy talk is in the afternoon, but all the other ones are um, up till noon. And uh, um, you should be able to get that information from the main lobby page, but uh, you don't need appointments or anything. You can just drop into um, those, those booths. Um, and uh, I see a question about um, psychology again, so I will just jump on this. Um, there are two streams in psychology. There's a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Arts. The vast majority of our students do a BA in psychology, which means there are no science requirements um, to get into psychology. If, uh, and if you're thinking you want to go on and be a psychologist, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science, you don't have a, a necessary advantage. If you're thinking about wanting to do something in science later on, some students thinking about med school, they do a degree in psych, then you would probably want to do the Bachelor of Science stream, in which case you would need the requirements that science has in terms of the courses uh, in, in high school that they're looking for, um, but they're not required to get into a, a BA in psychology. And there's a, there's a talk, there's a psych talk coming up um, by uh, my colleague, Matt Sorley, and, and he can um, definitely go into more detail if, if you have more questions about that. I don't know, it's hard to double major in. I think you don't have to look on a, you know, on a case by case basis. Cognitive science is already an interdisciplinary program. Um, so there are a lot of required courses in philosophy and psychology. And um, so it might be a little bit harder to double major with CogSci, um, but geography and other programs like psych, for example, would, would work for sure. So it really depends on the, the program that we're talking about. That's not to say that you couldn't um, do a, psych, a geography degree and take some courses in CogSci or vice versa. Okay, so it looks like we've kind of run out of questions. We're really happy to um, have met you virtually um, and we wish you all the best for the rest of the day. Um, again, uh, don't hesitate to check out our website. There's links for people to contact as well. Um, if you don't have all your questions answered today or you don't have all your questions formed today, uh, we're happy to, to follow up with you um, afterwards if you just get in touch. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks so much for coming out. Yeah, bye-bye.